So today I'm going to do a little review of modified unit analysis. But before I do that, I just want to show you something, um, a little, do a little aside here. Um, as you can see, uh, MUA, which stands for modified unit analysis, is actually AUM backwards. And of course, AUM backwards is a, another spelling or the original spelling of um, um, of ohm. And so this is another reason why I um, this uh, kind of led to the idea of naming my theory the ohm particle. Okay, so I do a lot of play on words with ohm and AUM and MUA and putting little, you know, secret messages into my language. And so I thought you might find that interesting. Um, so modified unit analysis, MUA, is AUM in disguise. So we are going to start with Planck's energy equation. Okay, this always starts with Planck's energy equation, which is energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. And this, of course, is related to light. And so this is the equation they use for light. And um, so it has units in standard unit analysis in the legacy language. Okay, energy has the units of joule. Planck's constant has the units joule times second. Okay, there's a little times in there. And frequency, of course, in the standard language has units of one over s. Okay, and sometimes they write that s to the minus 1. So, um, but I'm going to get rid of that for now. Okay, so um, this is how the units are mapping out. And then um, you can see that the, the two second terms cancel, and you end up with joules times 1 is equal to joules. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm sticking to my standard of putting square brackets around my unit analysis. So you know I'm doing, doing unit analysis if I draw square brackets, and I'm not doing unit analysis when I am when you don't see the square brackets. So this is the body of the equation, and this is the unit section. Okay, so um, this is the language that I'm using to talk about unit analysis. Some people call it dimensional analysis. I don't like to call it that. I prefer to call it actually domain analysis, where you have the domain of time, which is S, okay, the domain of space, which is the meter, okay, the domain, the unit for the domain of time is the second, the unit for the domain of space is meter. The unit for the domain of mass is kilogram, and so on. So that is the language that I'm using uh, when I talk about unit analysis. So this all seems good at first glance. However, what I have a problem with is um, this numerical value of 1. Um, putting a numerical value into the unit section um, seems to be um, causing a problem. Okay, so it's my opinion that you should not put numerical values into the unit section, not even the numerical value of 1, because you may, may be tempted to use it as the numerical uh, value of 1, the identity of the real numbers, and that is exactly what is going on here. So they are using this numerical value 1 as the identity of the real number to get rid of this numerical value of 1 and report their results in Joule. Okay, so um, I find I have a little problem with that. And so uh, there's another way of writing Planck's energy equation. You can write it like this, where you use h bar, which is reduced Planck's constant, times omega, which is the frequency, is uh, angular frequency, and angular frequency is um, 
uh, you multiply the frequency by 2 pi and you get angular frequency. And so angular frequency is in radians per second and normal frequency is in cycles per second. And so as you may have gathered from my previous videos, I prefer to work in the domain of cycle in cycle because cycle is one complete turn of my own particle model and radians are one, um, let me get a different color here, radians are just a partial section. It's a, the radius, sorry, it is the arc length of this circle such that it equals the radius of the circle. And so um, I prefer to work in cycles than in radians only because it makes more sense to it makes more sense to say that nature is quantized by the cycle. Okay, so the other problem I have is that um, h bar has the same unit. So h bar has units j times s uh, second, and omega has units one over s. So looking at the units alone, it's very difficult to distinguish whether you're using h or h bar and frequency and omega. So um, radians per second, right? Radians per second. Let me just get rid of some of this stuff here. Okay, so um, radians per second. So omega is reported in radians per second and frequency is cycles per second. Okay, radians per second and cycles per second both have the same unit, 1 over s, in the standard uh, language. And so um, I have a little bit of a problem with this. There seems to be some information missing, and I would like to put this back into the unit analysis to try and see what the mistake is. So here's what I would like to do. Okay, I'm gonna just I'm gonna do this slowly and walk you through my logic. Okay, so I want to just be able to distinguish between radians per second and cycles per second. And for the most part, I want to be working in the domain of frequency instead of angular frequency, because I want to really only worry about cycles per second. So what I would like to do, the first step I'm going to do is first of all this equation here okay this is not balanced okay so what i want to do is i want to put and i'm going to use a different color here so what i want to do is put a um a one in the uh, denominator of this um of this term right here okay so actually i could just put the whole thing the put the one under the j times s okay Either way, it doesn't matter because now this equation is balanced, okay, this equation is balanced, and I have uh, the 1's cancel, the S's cancel. I no longer need to do that because they've already canceled, and now I have the units of, of the joule, okay? So now I don't have to do, I don't have to use the numerical value 1 or sort of the value of 1 in the unit section as the identity of the real numbers and do a multiplication here. I don't have to do that because they already cancel in this part of the equation. And, um, right, so this cancels, this cancels, and you end up with, with the jewel. Okay, so that is what, that is the first step. Now the second step is just to be sure I don't want someone in the future to get confused and think that this is the numerical value of one and not just some other symbol. Because all of the other, um, all of the other domains have their own symbols. So the second is S and the meter is M. And kilogram is the unit, is, you know, so each domain has their own symbol. So I actually want um, the domain of cycle to have its own symbol. So I use the triangle the delta symbol in some of my work as the as the symbol and so then you're not going to make a mistake in the future okay and so this um this term here so let me just pick another color so this term here is uh goes with frequency and this reads cycles per second 
Okay, this term here reads seconds per cycle. And so seconds per cycle is the period of the wave. And so now um, joules times second has, um, has a better meaning in my opinion. It is the energy of, is the energy of, times means of, so it is the energy of one period, one cycle, one circle, one wavelength, one um, time around the um, ohm particle, okay, one spin around the ohm particle if you want to look at it that way. So um, Planck's constant, okay, is the energy of one um, period of uh, one cycle, one wavelength of light. And so this actually doing, fixing unit analysis and balancing this equation actually changes the meaning a little bit of Planck's constant. Yes, it is an action constant. It is the action of one turn, of one cycle, of one period of a wave, whether it be a standing wave or a traveling wave. Okay, so now I'm going to write everything from scratch, only I'm going to use modified unit analysis instead of the legacy unit analysis. So here is Planck's energy equation. And the units are, we want the units to end up being joule. Okay, so the units of Planck's constant are, are, okay, joule times second per cycle. Okay, actually this can go like that. This can go like that because you can group this with this, or you can group this with this. It doesn't change the meaning. Okay, so when you group this with this, then you get uh, that Planck's con constant is the energy of one um, period of light. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, so that is the units of Planck's constant and the units of frequency are cycles per second. Okay, and then the S's cancel, the deltas cancel, and you end up with the units of joule without having to use, uh, put the numerical value of one into the unit section and um, doing an intermediate step where you multiply joule times one to get joule. Okay, so this is a much cleaner, I think, approach to unit analysis, especially in regards to this equation. So now I'm gonna do something completely different. This is not something that uh, the mainstream does. Okay, they always write this equation in terms of energy. And so uh, what I'm going to do is just forget about this equation for now. I am going to just look at the unit analysis, okay? And what I'm going to do is I am going to divide both sides by uh, the unit S, okay? So the second, I'm gonna divide both sides by the second and I'm going to rewrite this equation in terms of power. Okay, so obviously because the unit, if I divide this by S, I'm gonna end up with the unit of power. And so uh, this should end up also with the unit of power. Okay, so um, I'm dividing both sides by S. Okay, the S's cancel. Okay, the S's cancel here. And then Planck's constant now has the units of joules per cycle and frequency doesn't change frequency has the unit cycles per second but when i um, divide both sides by s okay i get um, planck's constant now has the units of um, joule per cycle okay so now i can write a power equation power is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So it's the same equation, only it's written in terms of power. And so Planck's constant has units of joule per cycle. Okay. Frequency has units cycles per second. 
okay and then the final so the um, deltas cancel and then you end up with joule per second as you would expect of a power equation so let's uh, write this on a new page let's clean this up a bit and I am going to write um, the power equation power is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency and Planck's constant has units um, joule per cycle and that is the energy of one complete turn of my own particle model and frequency as units delta let me write that a little better delta per second okay these are the units of this equation and of course the final units are joule per second as you would expect of a power equation so the reason i like this equation i like um, planck's energy equation written in terms of power is because now this is very similar to another power equation uh, in the domain of electronics and so power is equal to voltage times current okay and so this equation has units that look very very uh, similar let me write that a little better okay here are the units in of this equation um, joule so voltage has units joule per, cou per coulomb and current has units coulomb per second okay and the coulombs cancel and you end up with joule per second as you would expect of a power equation so here is the question uh, why did mainstream write Planck's equation this equation that has to do with light in terms of energy instead of in terms of power because most if not all of the black body experiments were rep <coughs> reported in terms of intensity and intensity has units of watts right intensity has units watts per meter squared okay so intensity um, is written in terms of power not in terms of energy and so and the experiments were reported in terms of power or intensity and not in terms of energy so this to me seems like this should have been the correct way of writing the equation that is associated with light this is the power of the light emitted from uh, say one atom okay and so what I showed you in the previous video is that this equation is the unamplified the unamplified um, power that is emitted by let's say one atom that is not uh, the light that has not been made coherent uh, in terms of uh, lasing, in terms of a laser, or made coherent in terms of a uh, high power uh, radio signal. Okay, so this is the equation of the unamplified power that is emitted um, by the uh, atom when an atom, when an electron inside an atom emits a certain um, quantity of energy. And so or a certain frequency of energy. I think we should really be sticking with frequency. When we talk about energy, we should be talking about frequency, just like what Nikola Tesla was saying, because um, things begin to make more sense when you start looking in these terms. Now, when you compare this power equation with this power equation, okay, when you compare these two equations, you see that they have similar units. And also you can see that, um, that the frequency term in uh, Planck in this power equation uh, is analogous to the current, which is also a frequency term. So current is coulombs per second and frequency is cycles per second, uh, but they are both a, um, a current 
phenomenon. The frequency could just as easily be the, you know, number of waves, wave uh, fronts in a certain amount of time. Okay, or it could be the number of wave fronts, fronts that go by a certain point. And so uh, frequency uh, could also be seen as a current of, of, some, of sorts. So in this equation, frequency is analogous to current and Planck's constant is analogous to, um, to voltage. Okay, so Planck's constant plays the role of voltage. Frequency plays the role of current in these two very similar power equations. So basically what I'm doing here is I am unifying the domain of light, okay, P equals HF, uh, with the domain of electricity, P equals voltage times current. Okay, this has units joule per cycle, cycle per second, and this has units joule per coulomb and coulomb per second. So uh, my approach to unit analysis, modified unit analysis, led me to a logic that allowed me to write uh, an equation that is analogous to, very similar to, the equation that we use for power in the domain of electronics. And as you saw in my previous video, I was able to solve two problems using this equation, okay, one uh, in the domain of laser uh, technology and one in the domain of um, transmission of radio signals. Okay, so um, this equation is useful. It can be used to solve problems. I used it to solve a couple of problems. And so, and it doesn't have the um, language of the photon. It doesn't have the language of the action constant. So there's no action constant. There's no photon in this approach. Okay, because um, I divided both sides by the, the second. I was able to convert this to a power equation. And now Planck's constant has the, the units of joule per cycle or the energy of one turn of my own particle model. Okay, so now we're going to do something. Um, we're going to use modified unit analysis to, um, to sort of unwind some of the other equations in quantum mechanics. So there's another equation, and um, it's written like this, P is equal to h over lambda. Now this is where I really get annoyed with the standard language of, um, with the symbolic language of physics is because now we've got a p here, but this p means momentum. So I'm going to put a little dot here to distinguish that from my power equation that I just wrote. Okay, this p means momentum, and so in standard quantum mechanics, they write this equation, power is equal to Planck's constant times um, the wavelength of light. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down the modified unit analysis for this equation. So I'm not going to write down the standard units because uh, you can do that yourself and you can compare it to what I'm doing here. So momentum, okay, there is no momentum, there is no symbol for momentum in standard unit analysis. And so I'm just going to write kg meters per second, right, for the units of momentum. So those are the units of momentum, okay. The units of Planck's constant in uh, modified unit analysis. Now because this is a momentum, I have to use h times s over lamb or over delta over so this is the energy of one period of light so I have to write this down so I can do uh, the same procedure that I did in the previous video to convert this to a uh, force equation okay so and the units of lambda the units of wavelength in modified unit analysis is meters per cycle okay so in modified unit analysis these are the units of this equation here. Okay, so then um, we can write, um, 
So I am going to write, um, so this is actually Joule, sorry, this is not H, this is J, Joule times second times uh, per cycle, second per cycle. Joules times second per cycle is the energy of one period of light divided by the, um, the wavelength. And so this is actually joules times second per cycle uh, times cycle per meter. Okay. And the joule has units kilogram meters per second, meters per second. So you can see this uh, seconds per meter will cancel the meter per second. And you're going to end up, and the deltas cancel, and you end up with the units of kg meters per second. Okay, so you can see that even using modified unit analysis, the units match up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and convert it to a force equation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the momentum is equal to h over lambda and I'm going to write the units um, joule times second per cycle divided by um, meters per cycle. Okay, So those are the units. Um, the units of Planck's constant is joule times second per cycle and the um, units of lambda are meters per cycle. So that is the standard uh, unit for wavelength in modified unit analysis. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to write it here. So the units of uh, momentum are kilograms, meters per second, okay, is equal to joule times second per cycle times um, cycle per meter. Okay, so all I did was take the um, denominator here and moved it up to the numerator just to neaten things up a bit. So what I want to do next is I want to divide both sides by S. Okay, this converts, what this is doing is it's converting this equation into a force equation. So when you do that, you end up with the units of force. Okay, you end up with the units of force, and um, which is the newton. So let's write the n for newton is equal to. So here, okay, this s cancels this s. So now you have the units for Planck's constant as joule per cycle, and you have the units of um, lambda as still um, uh, meters per cycle, but I wrote them here as cycle per meter, um, which is more like the wave number. Okay, so this is actually the wave number in disguise. Okay, because the only reason I do that is because lambda is on the denominator and I'm putting it on the numerator, reversing it and putting it here just for convenience. And so you can see if you, um, you know, cancel all the units, so the deltas cancel, and um, so joule is kilogram meters per second, meters per second, um, let's say per delta, and then delta per meter. Okay, so the deltas cancel, this meters cancel, and you end up with the units of kilograms, meters per second per second, or the units of force of the Newton. Okay, so that's not very neat and tidy, but hopefully you get the logic of what I'm doing. So now I can take this equation. I'm going to pick a different color here. Let's take a slightly different color here. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to write it over here as force is equal to H over lambda. Okay, um, it's the same equation, only I've written it in terms of force, and I believe that this is the right thing to do because no one cares about momentum and energy. People really care about force and power. I want to know how much power is being delivered. I want to know how much force is being applied. 
And so the units for this are, H has units of joule per cycle, and lambda has units of meters per cycle. Okay, and so those are the units of the force equation. So I'm gonna write that cleanly on another page. So F is equal to um, H over lambda. Okay, only I want to write this in terms of uh, frequency because I want all my equations in terms of frequency. Okay, so, um, so how do we do that? Um, lambda is actually equal to, so H over C over frequency. Okay, or we could write this H um, over C times frequency. Okay, so this is the frequency equation that corresponds to this. Now, as you might recall from the previous um, video, H over C, H over C is what I'm calling quantum of momentum. Okay, so now I have derived my force equation from the previous video. So now force is equal to quantum of momentum times the frequency. Okay, so this is how I derive my equation. Uh, force is equal quantum of momentum times the frequency. And this is the unamplified force. Okay, so this is the um, unamplified force, which is the force that the um, light energy would apply to an object um, if it were to be, if the object was to be bombarded by that light of this frequency. So this is the I showed you in the previous video and um, earlier on I showed you the uh, power equation. This is the power equation. Um, basically it is, I'm going to write it here um, on a new page. So power is equal to the quantum of energy times F, frequency, and the force is equal to quantum of momentum to quantum of momentum times the frequency of light that I showed you in my previous video. So this is basically how I came to writing these two equations. I switched to using modified unit analysis, and now I have equations in terms of power and in terms of force. So the main point I want to make here is that these two equations are of the unamplified, the un, the unamplified um, power. This is the unamplified power and the unamplified force. This is the unamplified power um, of a light that of a of light that is emitted by say one atom by an atom, uh, and this is the unamplified force that would be exerted on an object in an unamplified situation. And so if you want to amplify the power and the force, so in the case of a laser, we know how to do that. You amplify the amplitude of the signal, okay? So you get higher power if you have a higher frequency but you also get a higher power if you amplify, if you amplify the signal. And so what, um, in the previous uh, video, I showed you an example of how they calculate the number of photons. And by the way, the, uh, the units for the number of photon in the mainstream language is one over S. Okay, so when they did their calculation for the photon, the photon had units one over S. So one over S stands for radians per second, cycles per second, and photons per second. And so I have a problem with this. Um, uh, when you do modified unit analysis and you write the equations in terms of power and force, you don't need 
the concept of a photon. Instead, what you have is an atom that is outputting a light frequency. Now, this is just a schematic of a frequency, okay? And if it's not amplified, the power that it delivers is calculated using this equation. So uh, Planck energy is the energy of one cycle. And if you want to get an amplified power, you are going to have to stack these photons, or sorry, these, um, these wave fronts. I prefer to, to uh, I call these wave fronts. Okay, these are wave fronts. What you need to do is amplify these wave fronts. Now you can call these photons if you want to, but these are not photons in the traditional sense because um, the photon is supposed to be the output of this equation in mainstream, and this is not the energy of a photon. Okay, so photons don't exist in the language I'm proposing. There doesn't need to be a photon. What does exist is a wave. Okay, and the wave is is amplified in a laser, and it's amplified in a radio <coughs> radio signal, in an amplified radio signal, and this is what is getting transmitted. Um, from source to sink. Okay, so if the atom is the source, you amplify the signal by making more of the, more of the uh, waves coherent, so you get an amplified signal, and um, this is what is getting sent to the detector. <coughs> and so what I'm trying to say here is that photons don't exist in the sense that this equation E equals HF is not the equation of a fundamental particle called the photon. It is the uh, equation of a, um, let's go here, of one second worth of wave fronts hitting a detector. Okay, so this equation, E equals HF, in my opinion, is the equation of one second worth of wave fronts that are hitting the detector. Now the wave fronts can be amplified. When you amplify a laser, you're amplifying this wave front. The wave front is still propagating at the speed of light, okay? But the wave fronts um, could be uh, have a much bigger amplitude if you amplify the signal as in a laser or in a radio signal. So to recap, in this video I showed you how I derived my two uh, equations, the power equation. So power is equal to um, quantum of energy, which is really Planck's constant, times uh, the frequency of light. And in this, in modified unit analysis, Planck's constant has units of um, joules per cycle, and frequency has units of cycles per second. Okay, I added a delta term, delta equals cycle, or cycles, cycles per second, or joules per cycle. Okay, and those are the units of um, this equation here. And then I wrote a companion um, force equation is equal to H over C, which is my quantum of momentum uh, times the frequency of light. And this has units of um, momentum per cycle or just kg meters per second per cycle times cycles per second, which has the units of force. Okay, and this one has the units of the joule, sorry, of power, of the watt. Sorry about that. It has the, let me erase that and do it right. This is the watt. Okay, so the um, these equations, uh, this equation here has these units, which is, is the units of power, and this equation here has um, 
this form here and it's got units of force. And as I showed you in the previous video, I used these two equations, although I wrote power is equal to quantum of energy times F and force is equal to quantum of momentum times force. Okay, the quantum of energy is H and quantum of momentum is H over C. And I showed you how um, the NIST standard has um, maybe some problems with their unit analysis regarding this and also regarding H over C squared. Both of them have units kg in the NIST standard and that doesn't make sense at all. So there is a problem with the mainstream unit analysis and I think that problem has led to many difficulties in the interpretation of these very important equations that are related to light. These are also related to quantum mechanics. So the interaction between um, light and particles such as the electron. And so um, these equations can be used for both particles and waves when you're talking about quantum mechanics, when you're talking about, say, um, the electron. Now, I've been getting a lot of flack lately. People are saying things like, oh, they're disappointed because I'm subscribing to the particle model. No, I have a particle model. I use the word particle, but in my model, particles are standing waves and light is a propagating wave. Okay, particles are a standing wave or a circular wave um, and light is a propagating wave. And that is the only difference between light and matter in the um, the own particle theory that or model that I am um, working with and that I am proposing. As an added bonus, I'm able to uh, connect the concepts that I'm working with. Um, the power equation, which I'm writing here in terms of Planck's constant and the frequency of light, okay, and with units um, joule per cycle and cycle per second, um, I'm able to show the similarities between that equation and another very important uh, power equation in the domain of electronics. Okay, so there's the equation for the power of an electrical signal and voltage has units joule per coulomb and current has units of coulomb per second. Okay, so the frequency term in this equation um, is plays the role of the current and the um, Planck's constant kind of plays the role of the voltage. The units are very similar. And so um, I like this a lot. I think this is the right thing to do in terms of a true understanding of the nature of light. Okay, I think this was originally supposed to be a power equation because all of the blackboard experiments were um, reported in terms of watts per meter squared. Okay, so um, there's nothing wrong with writing this as a power equation. I've been able to use this equation successfully to solve problems, so there's nothing wrong with the logic. Um, I think mathematically my modified unit analysis is more robust, and so you don't have to do tricks like E equals HF with units of um, joule times second and then 1 over S. And then that equals joule times 1 equal to joule. So this avoids the problem of putting a numerical value in its section and using it as a numerical value, which I actually think is a mistake. Okay, so I know I've said this a million times, but I need to say it again because I want to start using, I want to start looking at other aspects of uh, the physics where they use Planck's constant and where they use uh, frequency terms. Um, I want to start converting those uh, equations into this language to see if we can get to see if we can get a better interpretation of what's going on under the hood. 
So that's why I'm doing all this. I'm trying to rip this apart and piece it back together again and rewrite the program so that we can actually have a better understanding and, and unify concepts. So this actually unifies the concept of light with the concept of electricity a little bit. It gives us a few clues as to um, what is going on with these uh, units being very similar. I think we can maybe find a nice way of merging these, uh, these two ideas into one idea. And so that's why I'm doing this. I am trying to unify concepts. I'm trying to bring ideas together. I'm trying to remove any confusing concepts such as the photon, um, which always bothered me. I never really liked um, the way that this was working out. And so by um, doing a more robust unit analysis, as I'm doing here, I, you know, I think we get, we're getting a different picture of what's going on under the hood. So that's all I'm going to say for now, and I hope you guys had a great Christmas, and have a happy new year that's coming up, and um, I'll be back.